Hey, what's up? It's Chris Deleon here of HomeTeamGameDev.com. And today I want to show you a simple scheduling technique that can help enormously to avoid the kind of overwhelm that prevents us from achieving our goals. This is the same thing that's going to be applied over a span of a week, as I'm going to show an example of. We apply it on a weekly basis for a span of months. Within our club, we'll show you a few examples of cases where we've done that. And it's also something which can work on a month-to-month -month scale throughout an entire year. So my hope is that through this video, it's going to help enable you to, like I say, have less overwhelm, do more of the things you mean to be doing, and uh, perhaps maybe nail more of your New Year's resolutions, if that's a thing that you're choosing to do, whether it's creating projects, whether it's teaching yourself something, starting a new hobby, whatever it might be. Now, the way I'll be doing this is on a service called Trello. Trello has a free and a paid plan. The free plan gets you a lot of what you need to do this. In fact, I've been on the free plan for years. It's fine. Uh, that said, there's many alternatives to Trello. If for any reason you prefer not use that, Kanban is the word to look for. We just look for Kanban board. You'll find lots of examples of competitors who have online free alternatives that do basically the same thing. What makes it a Kanban board uh, normally is that it's got kind of like an under process, a finish to do, but most of these are pretty generalizable where you can name the columns. I'm going to show you a really easy way to do that. So example task schedule. What I'm going to show you today, first of all, is a kind of weekly version of it. Then I'll show you some examples of where we do this on a longer scale for club projects. So this morning, my wife and I were talking about she had a lot of things she wanted to get done this week. And it's a little overwhelming because it's a holiday week. She's got time off from work, but there's just a lot to handle and only a few certain days to do it. So I said, first of all, okay, let's create an unsorted column. And this is, like I say, the same thing we use for our club projects, same thing I do for some of my bigger business initiatives. And then we figure out what are our regular intervals we're going to check in on. Okay, well, today's Sunday. There's Monday, Tuesday. We're going to skip. I think Wednesday this week is Christmas. And we'll say Thursday. And obviously, again, we can arbitrarily pick which times we want. This could be January, February, March, what have you. We're just going to brain dump. What are the things that I'm currently distracting myself, splitting my attention between? So let's say I need to let's see FedEx some stuff, need to buy wrapping paper. We realized she needed to uh, visit Target for some gifts. She needed to uh, pick up some headphones. What else was there? There's some stuff about uh, wrapping gifts. Of course, happens before the wrapping paper. Uh, we had some things like, well, there's just some tidying up, kind of normal weekly stuff that includes also grocery pickup, uh, just some basic things that happen. And so, okay, we could look at this today and say, I feel overwhelmed, and I'm sure we could even come up with other ones. But we're just like, okay, that's a lot to handle. Some of this doesn't matter the order, some of this does. And so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of ordering this a little bit to say, well, let's just think about this for a second, okay? Uh, wrapping gifts is going to happen probably before we FedEx stuff. Uh, let's see, tidying up order doesn't matter. And I'm just dragging these around. Buying wrapping paper. Well, we're going to have to buy wrapping paper before we wrap gifts. Grocery pickup doesn't really matter on order. And you see I'm putting the bottom stuff in an order that's kind of sensitive to each other. Visiting Target probably has to happen before we wrap gifts. But we probably want to also wrap gifts and things, FedEx them, maybe before Tuesday. They're not going to get there in time for the holiday. We kind of expect that's part of the plan going into this. So FedExing stuff, that could wait, because again, we're not actually concerned about it getting there before the holiday. So because we need to wrap stuff before then. Probably want to visit it sometime before. Could be the same day. We can also just kind of spread them out a little bit. Tidying up doesn't terribly matter in the order. In fact... Let's say we're looking at our schedule. We say Tuesday is going to be a really tough day. In fact, Monday too for shopping because of the upcoming holiday. So knowing that we're going to scoot that earlier in the week. Uh, in fact, the things we can do at home without getting out are probably going to be the easiest on Christmas Eve. So we don't want to do grocery pickup then either. Let's get it out of the way sooner before the holiday. Wrapping paper as part of maybe that visit to Target. Those two probably pair well together. Picking up some headphones. It depends if that's a gift or not. And in fact, we might even push some of this stuff, if we don't need the groceries immediately, over to Thursday. And uh, you can start to see how we kind of play this out. Okay, this is a little full. FedEx and stuff, wrapping gifts, wrapping paper. Let's spread those two out. Um, tidying up, like I say, Christmas Eve is going to be a better time to not get out. It's going to be a lot of parking challenges. So that was all there was to it. Literally figure out what are my metered dates. Uh, and, at, and here's the kind of catch about how we use it. This is a tentative plan. We didn't bake this into stone. Yeah, like you just saw there, I can drag the cards around. That's part of it. It's nice about Kanban format. And so what we do is we adapt as we go. So let's say today happens it's Sunday. Maybe we fit in Target. 
So one of the ways people use boards too is instead of an unsorted, once we've got it ready, we'll have a done column. We might drag target over to done. Okay, now tomorrow started, we wake up, we're tired. You know what? We didn't find the wrapping paper. We're happy we're there. We just drag it onto Monday and we archive the previous list. Chopped it away, cut it, like think about a bridge vanishing behind you. Back in time doesn't matter. And so if there's, okay, now Monday happens. And so let's see, we got a couple things done. Maybe we uh, wrap some gifts because we got the wrapping paper. You know, we didn't get to the headphones. Uh, let's say we didn't even FedEx some stuff. So I'm going to drag FedEx uh, some stuff home or forward. Picking up headphones, maybe it's not uh, urgent. We could kick that head all the way to Thursday. And occasionally you'll even be able to replace things because if these start to stack up on you, what we can do is we can just decide, you know what, this isn't as important as other things. And it becomes easy to archive cards, which let me show you a quick shortcut for that. Test card. In Trello, if you mouse over it and press the C key, it archives it. Uh, if we go to show menu, you can see the history of what's been changed. So we could even send it back to board if we want to undo that action. Speaking of which, while we're over here, this background, you know, let's say we want to pick something a little more themed. There's a good mobile app for this too, by the way. So if you find that, uh, you know, you want to edit this on your smartphone on the go, pretty handy. And so now, okay, so Monday happened. We archive that behind us. And again, you can see what's happening. So Tuesday, okay, we know we want to tidy up. We've done it. And uh, FedEx some stuff. Okay, we knocked that out Tuesday. Day was good. And in fact, maybe we have a little extra bandwidth on Tuesday than we expected. Well, we just fish from the future. And we say, you know what? I still have some energy. Let's knock out those headphones. Got them. It doesn't matter. We didn't wait until Thursday. All that matters is stuff got done. And the way that we were able to plan that a little bit, A, to spread it out, B, to be sensitive to order considerations. And so this is just obviously a lightweight example of we took, okay, I felt overwhelmed. I had too many things to do at one moment. And now I've been able to spread out to just two or three things a day with confidence that on the given day, I knew if I just did the things that I planned for, things would be happening in the right order. I wouldn't be missing things. Nothing would be dro getting dropped. This is also what I like about this. Let's say I'm trying to take care of some things and I have another idea part through the week that should happen. I don't have to distract myself by remembering it. I just add it to my relevant card in the future of when that needs to happen. And then I can clear my mind of it by having a place to put it or scroll it away. If we look at some examples where we're doing this in the club on a bigger time schedule. Uh, so here's a project with a couple of weeks left, a done column. And again, think about this where initially we first just created a huge stack of cards. Here's a newer project. We initially created a huge stack of cards that was unsorted. We then spread out, we picked Sunday since that's when our club meetings are. And then each Sunday we spread out some tasks for that date. Here's another one. And, you know, obviously, like you see, we can have columns for other reasons, right? They don't all have to be dates. That's just the way we use them. You could also, we have a mood board of themes, stuff like that. And so we can schedule ahead what's supposed to be happening for any given week. The symbol of the crypts, tasks, spread out some things. Kung Tu. So here's an example of a finished project. Part of our, our visual language test, we gray out the background when it's finished. But everything is in the done column. There's nothing left. We chewed away the weeks as the time caught up to us. And that helps us also visualize how much time we have left in a way that we start to see when there's two or three weeks left, we start prioritizing a little differently, right? We start cutting some things that aren't going to happen because we see that there's not as much room to keep shoving them forward. And again, it's it's very adaptive. Uh, see, we've got The Great Hero is another recent one. And uh, yeah, so basically, again, you can do this on a weekly basis there if we just took an unsorted column. Plan out the weeks, figure out, okay, well, we need the level design tool before we're going to be able to design levels. We need uh, this, need to get the wrapping paper before we wrap the gifts. Whatever it might be, you can set those up to finish your Udemy course you want to take before you try to start that project that's going to practice that skill. And so it's also why it's handy for when you have a goal for 2020. And let's say it's a New Year's resolution. Instead of dumping it all on yourself at once, which can be overwhelming, which can prevent us from doing it because we're thinking about too much at once, you can just Put down January, February, March, April, May, June, July, throughout the year. Come up with your unsorted task for, okay, what are some things that has to happen? Uh, I don't know. Evaluate, let's say it's a gym membership, since that's a common example for New Year's resolutions. Pick a gym, right? Figure out which gym you want to go to. Step one, until you've got some information on that. So maybe your January task is to narrow down, research, pick a gym. Figure out which is the price that fits your goals, the distance, the parking seems all right. Maybe visit a couple on some sort of guest pass, day pass preliminary trial basis. So January could be that. February, right, could be just getting yourself going at all. Could be the goal you put there. 
And again, if life happens, if you get a unfortunate surprise somehow in work or personal life or otherwise, and it doesn't happen in February, you kick the card forward to March and you look at, are there ripples in my schedule? And it can really be one or two things a month, one or two things per week and still be worth doing because it keeps us aware of the time passage. And with otherwise, the year will kind of blur together, which is where I think a lot of people start to lose their pace. And so like I say, okay, we've got ourselves going at all, maybe March or April. After we've established a rhythm of going at all, going through the motions, we get a little more, a little bit more considerate about, do I find an exercise routine, a series of sets, a series of practices? I used to do on my lifting days was like Monday was chest and triceps, Wednesdays was biceps and back, Friday was legs and shoulders, some sort of plan, or maybe the off days aerobics or something, some sort of plan for how to use that time more efficiently. Once you've persuaded yourself, you know what, I'm going anyway, I'm doing it anyway. And again, here's the point. You don't have to start with that in January. You don't have to try to bite it all off at once. You can start and spread it out. And that makes you much more likely to achieve what you're going for because you don't wind up with this avalanche hitting you all at once. So anyway, so you've got yourself these tasks. You've laid it out. You've built yourself a calendar, a schedule, whether it's within the next five days, like this example, whether it's over a two to five month schedule on a weekly basis, like we do for the club projects, whether it's over a whole year of monthly objectives like you might do for, like I say, New Year's resolution or for your business, right? This is very much the same thing I do for delivering when I create audiobooks, when I create video courses, when I create new aspects and resources and ebooks and things. This is how I'm doing that stuff. Now, speaking of which, now you have these cards set up. You're wondering, okay, okay, I know what I mean for myself to do that date or that by the end of that month. Part of the other nice thing is when the month starts to come to an end, you realize, ooh, can I cram this in just to be able to check this off and keep myself moving the ball forward? How do I get myself to actually do it? That is why I created Self-Command, this new audiobook. Self-Command.com will redirect you to the Gumroad page. It is a new audiobook I've been working on now for years, literally. Uh, it's gone through several rewrites. You'll find a lot of information there, including some testimonials from folks who found it very helpful. And it's really, it's a set of ideas, simple practices. The one I just covered here, this tre Trello scheduling thing is not part of it. Instead, it focuses on, okay, when you know what you want to do, and you actually have whatever you might need to do it. You have the relevant support, the relevant resources, uh, and yet it's not happening. That's a lot of what I work with people on as a game development trainer. I meet a lot of people who they want to make games. They have access to resources. They have accumulated bookmarks and training tutorials and example files, and they're not doing anything with it. I work with people in finding ways to help get them to do it. And so one way, of course, if you join my club hunting game dev, I can work with you personally on that. But there's an application process for that. I know it's not everyone's necessarily doing this for games. That's the nice thing about this. So we took these techniques and strategies. We generalized it enough so that even if you're not a game developer, we draw these examples to, like I say, it's the same way I've run my podcast. It's the same way I've produced a daily YouTube video for more than a year. Obviously, that was a while ago now. The same way I wrote blog articles for essentially one per week for about five years. I uh, made a daily prototype for over seven months consecutive. One of the strengths that I've figured out is ways, techniques to get myself to do the thing I'm meaning to do. And ways to think about and see and frame that so we don't get hung up on overwhelming ourselves, so we don't get kind of bound down by regrets about how something didn't pan out. So that's all this is about. And I will say, if you're in a situation where monetarily it just doesn't make sense, like you might have heard in one of other videos, maybe you're stretched in for buying gifts, bless you for that. Maybe it's just a situation where the dollar isn't strong where you're at, the exchange rates are tough. Um, there's an I will volunteer option down below. There's literally a link to click on that if you click that link, you can get this for $0 and it's on the honor system that you will find some way, shape or form to help others who aren't in a position to help you back for two hours within the next year. It's literally all I'm asking because I'd rather have that happen than, you know, not be able to get access to this. If it's going to be something that helps you, it might even help you do it because this whole point is to get yourself to do the things you mean to be doing. So thanks for considering this. Thanks for considering this strategy. I really recommend deploying this, trying this out in your life. It is exactly as easy as what I just showed there. Obviously, I've had a lot of practice at it over the years. This way, I've been doing projects now for whew, longer than since 2010 because that was our second club and started using Trello. We basically did this with an Excel sheet in 2004 for our first club for our bigger projects. So it's real straightforward to do. You can set up a free account at Trello.com. Get yourself to stop overwhelming yourself on things. Uh, to, to even assign yourself the task, you can use the self-command techniques to lay out your board. Like I say, brain dump what there is to do start putting in an order and it lets you then laser focus on one task at a time or one week at a time or one month at a time that you already planned out what to do, 
Next challenge is to get yourself to do it. Self-command can help you there. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having a great holiday. Catch you maybe in 2020. Bye for now.